This video demonstrates how to calculate the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, or PMCC or R value as it's more commonly known, using a spreadsheet. We're going to do it step by step, but we are going to use the built-in function just to check our result at the end. There are a few different versions of the formula for calculating the um, PMCC. We're going to use this particular one here. Um, so R equals N sigma XY minus sigma X sigma Y. This means you multiply the X and Y values together for each data point and then sum them all at the end. This means you sum all the X values and then you sum all the Y values and you multiply them together. Um, and down the bottom here, this is the uh, this is the sum of all the X values and then squared. This is the X values all squared and then summed. And of course, N where it appears is the number of bits of data we've got. And we've got the square root symbol applying across the whole of the denominator, the bottom of that fraction. So there are other forms of this equation available. They should all give the same answer. But this is the easiest one to work with in this particular case. So now that we have our formula here, we'll keep that in mind as we do the calculations. We'll leave it on the bottom right corner. We're going to look at the data set we have. We've got some hypothetical test scores for a group of students. So uh, column A shows their end of year maths test results and column B shows their end of year science result. We've got 20 students, so 20 data points. Um, and you notice I've labelled maths as X and science as Y, so it's very clear what my X and Y parameters are. Um, if you go back to the formula now, we've got uh, x's that we need. Sorry, we've got an x here, sigma x we need, and sigma x here, sigma y, and sigma y here. But we also need x squared, y squared, and xy. So we're going to create some columns for those. So in column C, we'll do x squared. In column D, y squared. And in column E, xy. Now you'll notice that this isn't actually x squared, it's just x2. I really should have a superscript on the two. Uh, in Excel or pages, sorry, in Excel or numbers, it's very easy to do that. Uh, I'm using Google Sheets, so it's not so easy. There are some workarounds, and if you want to see how to do that to get the appearance uh, looking a little bit more correct, um, go to the end of the video, and I'll do a little add-on at the end of the video to show you how you can do that, um, including um, some later things that will come up in this video as well. So now we're going to work out the x squared values, y squared values, and the xy values. So click in the first cell. Um, and we want to square the x value, so we'll type equals as it's a formula. Um, we'll click on the x value, and then there's two ways we can do this. We can either multiply it by itself, so it's a2 times a2, and click on that, and it'll give us our results. Or there's another way we'll do it, and I'll show you how to do that in the y squared one. If we click on here, we need to do y squared, so equals. Click on the y value, and then we can do the caret symbol, that's the one above the 6, um, the upward pointing arrow and a 2, so that says it's the power of 2, and hit enter. Um, hit enter on that, and that will put our x squared value in there. In the final column here, column E, we want x times y, so equals, click on the x value, the star, shift 8 for the multiplication sign, click on the y value, and hit enter, and that's our x, y values. So we've got those for the row 2, the first student. If we select them all, now, the quick way to copy those down, select all three. If you hover over this, um, the uh, blue square in the corner here, you'll notice our cursor changes. Once it's done that, we can either click and drag, or a much quicker way is just to double click, and it automatically fills the formula down to the last row of data. OK, now that we've performed the first level of calculations, we're going to go back to this formula, and we're going to look at all the elements in this formula that we need to build it up. We need an n, a sigma xy, sigma x, sigma y, etc. So we're going to enter these now in column G. Um, and I'm just going to type in what they are, first of all. So n is the first one. Um, the next one, we'll, we'll do the sigma x, sigma y. Now, again, we've got the problem that um, Google Sheets doesn't make it very easy. We've, to put in the Greek letter sigma here is quite tricky in Google Sheets, but again, I'll show you how you can do that um, at the end, a little clip at the end of this video if you want to, to know how to do that. But we'll use SX for now, um, we'll use SY, um, and then we'll, we need sigma x squared, sigma y squared, and sigma xy. So sigma x2, again, the formatting obviously isn't right, sigma y2, and uh, sigma xy. So the formatting isn't right, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, and we'll just make all of these bold so that we can, um, they'll stand out a little bit more. 
Right, now we're going to use formulae to add these up. For n, the number of bits of data there are, we could just type in the number 20 because we know there are 20. Um, I prefer to do it all by formulae. So the formula is count, so equals, and then the word count. Open the brackets, um, click just on one column, not both, because if you click on both, it'll count each one twice. Uh, and there we go, we've got 20 pieces of data. Uh, the sum of the x column, that's the sum of everything in column A. So again, click in the click an equal sign first of all um, and then type the word sum to give you the total you'll see there it says sum of a series of numbers and or cells open the brackets um, click and drag and there we have the sum of the x values and then we just repeat this sum for the y values click and drag to repeat that um, and so on now there is a little button up here if you want the uh, to get the sum more quickly you can click on there to be honest with a, a word as short as sum I find it just as easy to type um, but if you prefer to use the formulae you can do that so click on there the word sum um, click down click and drag down and we get that um, and finally the last one and there we go there we have our six values that we're going to put into this formula so the next stage is to build up this formula to calculate the r value so now we have all the values we need to build up this formula we've got the tricky bit which is to actually construct this in a spreadsheet we could do it all in one go but i prefer for simplicity to make it a little bit easier and to break it down into um, individual parts. Now it's up to you how much you break it down. I'm just going to do the the top part of the fraction in one which will, is the um, numerator and the bottom half of the fraction in another which is the denominator. Now you can break it down in more detail if you like because the denominator is particularly fiddly um, but we'll work through that and we'll see how you get on with that. So we've got the, I'll just call it top and bottom rather than numerator and denominator um, spell bottom correctly um, and then we'll use those to work out the R value at the end uh, and again these aren't bold at the moment so we'll select those cells and click them to make them bold so the top so this is going to be this part of the calculation we'll put an equal sign in first of all to show that it is a formula and then we'll just click on the elements in the list above so the first one is n multiplied by the sum of xy and then we subtract the sum of x times the sum of y and you can see we can just do this by clicking on the numbers h1 times h6 which is n times sum of xy minus h2 times h3 which is sum of x times sum of y hit enter and there's the top value of the formula um, the bottom line is harder now I find this easiest to do by um, first of all putting my parentheses in place so it's a formula um, so we'll put the equal sign in. Now you'll notice we've got the square root sign around everything. So I'm going to type the code for square root. And this is the same in any spreadsheet packages, SQRT. As you start typing, it comes up with lists of things. So positive square root of a positive number. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and then we'll put two brackets in. Now we're going to need to put inside the brackets these expressions. Now at this point, I build it up part by part. I've got the first part and the second part go in the brackets, so I'll put in two set of parentheses with a multiplication sign in between them there. And then in the first set of parentheses, I'm going to type this n sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared. So n times sigma x squared minus sigma x, and then we'll do carat 2 for squared. And in the second set of parentheses, I've got n y squared minus sigma y all squared, so n times sigma y squared minus sigma y and the caret symbol are two for all squared. And there's the value there. Now I've already rounded this to one decimal place, but if yours is a long decimal and you want to tidy it up a bit, you've got some buttons here on Google Sheets. You have similar things in Excel and Numbers to help you round it, or you can go into the Format menu to, to round it. Um, if I just show you how these work, increase decimal places, puts another one on the end, decrease, removes them. So you can play around with the formatting. And the R value, of course, is now the top divided by the bottom. So equals top, the forward slash is the division symbol, click on the bottom, and there you go, point zero point seven one seven is our R value.
One final thing I like to do is just to check my calculations to make sure I haven't made any mistakes is to use the built-in formula. So we've got 0 0.717 as our R value there. Uh, if we just go down, leave another gap and we'll um, type in, I'll put it in quotes, coral. Um, that's the name of the formula that the, uh, the spreadsheet uses. And again, we'll just highlight those in bold. And in the next cell we'll put that formula so equals because it's a formula and we'll start typing the word correlation and you'll see it comes up coral Pearson product moment correlation coefficient again this works in other spreadsheet packages as well um, click on that now we ne need to select the two columns of data so we'll click and drag to select the first column comma click and drag to select the second column and hit enter and there you go to three decimal places certainly it's the same value if you want to check a little bit more accurately, just select both the cells and just increase the number of decimal places and you'll see that the R value we've calculated is the same as the one that the Excel, the built-in formula in the spreadsheet, it's not Excel, sorry, Google Sheets, the same as the spreadsheet is calculated as well, which is a confirmation that our calculation is correct. Earlier in the video I talked about the importance of having mathematically correct notation here um, because what we've done is an abbreviation just whatever Google Sheets allows us to do. Um, Excel and Numbers it's a bit easier to actually get the correct um, formula in place but I'm just going to show you how to do it in um, Google Sheets. It's a little bit fiddly, a little bit unusual but you'll see the method and see how it works. I'm going to do it with SXY because then you'll see how to put the sigma in place and how to put the squared symbol in place and they're special characters so entering them is a little bit fiddly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put them all into one box. So we'll click on there. Um, actually, we'll do it in an empty box first of all. We'll click here and then you'll see how we can get it. So we're going to use two formulae here. The first one we're going to use, we're going to put uh, the equal sign in first, is concatenate. Um, and you'll see there it says concat, uh, concatenation of two values. Um, appends strings to one another. That's what we're going to do. We're going to append things. We're going to put bits of text, collect them together to join them up into one expression. So we're going to click on concatenate and it opens the brackets for us. And we're going to put three elements in here. We're going to put the sigma sign, we're going to put the x, and we're going to put the superscript 2 for the squared value. Now the sigma sign is a special character and to get to it we need to type char for character, open the brackets, and the number 425. 425 is the number that accesses the sigma sign. It's just a, a coding system and that's what the sigma happens to be. Uh, then we'll put a comma in. Then we want our x, but we need to put that in double quotes. So we'll press the double quote button and the x. You'll see it's gone green here on my screen. Then a comma and then we want the superscript 2 for the squared symbol. Incidentally I've put a space after the commas. Um, normally do it after every comma just for ease of viewing, but you don't need to put that in there. We can get rid of it. Um, and char and the squared, the superscript 2, is character 178. So type in 178. Close those brackets. You'll see that the two brackets around the 178 are highlighted. We also need to close the bracket to end the formula for concatenate. So we'll press another close bracket. Um, we'll hit enter. And there you go. You see we've got the sigma x squared. Um, if we want to put that in there, um, we can just copy it across. So we'll, um, we'll copy that. Go to edit, copy. Um, and we'll put it in there. Now if we don't want to change the formatting um, we'll just do, sorry, edit, um, paste special and we'll paste the values only and there you've got sigma x squared so it's now mathematically correct notation um, and you can apply that to any of the other places that you needed in column G or indeed in columns C and D.